I find it humorous that René totally lost track of the stated purpose of this paper and never returned to Gaddy's construction. René's pamphlet shows Gaddy's construction, which starts with a circle and ends with a square. Yet, René didn't get beyond a rectangle that's only halfway through the construction. Perhaps, René should have titled his paper on rectangling the circle. Along this line, an interesting mistake, possibly an editor's mistake in René's paper, is his reference to the Gaddy rectangle, CGJK. That would be C, G, J, K, oops. Apparently, you don't need to know how to label a two-dimensional geometric figure correctly to be a Mensaite. Perhaps René should have titled his paper on bow tying the circle. The rest of Gaddy's construction is an exercise in squaring this rectangle, but you don't even need to know the rectangle is there to do it. Let's continue where we left off with Gaddy's construction. Extend line segment AD so that it intersects the outside edge of the first circle at point F. Then, draw another circle centered at point D with radius DF. The radius of this circle is 1 plus the square root of 3 times R. This circle's area is 1 plus the square root of 3 squared times larger than the first circle. Extend segment DE out until it intersects the circle at point G, forming radius DG, whose length is 1 plus the square root of 3 times R. We now have line segment CG with a total length equal to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 plus 1 times R. Now let's bisect this line segment. Draw a couple of leader circles centered at points C and G with radii more than half the length of CG. Then draw a line through the two points where the circles intersect. This perpendicular bisector intersects line segment CG at its midpoint, point H. Draw a circle centered at point H that passes through points C and G. The radius of this circle is half the length of segment CG. The circle's area is larger than the first circle by 1 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 all times r over 2, all squared. Extend a line segment from point E, perpendicular to segment CG, until it intersects the circle at point I. Now some of you might recognize the opportunity to take a shortcut here. Sometime during high school geometry, we all stumbled upon the mean proportional theorem. We might even have had to prove that A is proportional to X, as X is proportional to B. And therefore, X equals the square root of A times B. As a special case, if we let b equal 1, then x equals the square root of a. Cool. Applying the mean proportional to this construction, we have ce on one side with a length of the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 times r, and on the other side we have r. Therefore, line segment ei has a length equal to the square root of the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 times r. Using the mean proportional saves a bunch of messy math. Now, draw another circle centered at point E that passes through point I. This circle's area is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 times larger than the first circle. Extend segment EG out until it intersects the circle at point J. Segments EI and EJ are perpendicular and congruent, equal in length. Complete the square by drawing segment IK perpendicular to segment EI and segment JK perpendicular to segment EJ. I, K, and J, K are also perpendicular. So, there it is. We have a square with an area equal to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 times R squared. And we have a circle with an area equal to pi times R squared. What part of this exercise actually proved that the square and the circle have the same area? None of it. All we did was draw a bunch of circles, line segments, and right triangles. Oh, and a square. Nowhere did we do anything that would infer that the ending square would have the same area as the starting circle. There were no definitions, no theorems, no postulates, nothing to substantiate Rene's assertion that pi is equal to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. Nada. We can assume Rene wasn't aware that in 1882, a German mathematician named Ferdinand von Lindemann proved that pi is a transcendental number meaning it's not a root of any polynomial with rational coefficients, and therefore you cannot construct it. But René did know about Archimedes, also of Alexandria. In his pamphlet, René points out that around 250 BC, 
Archimedes drive limits for pi. Rene even states those limits and Gaddy's pi is outside those limits. To derive these limits, Archimedes started with a circle. He constructed a regular hexagon around the circle. The perimeter of this hexagon has to be greater than the circumference of the circle because the circle fits inside it. He then constructed a regular hexagon inside the circle. The perimeter of this hexagon has to be less than the circumference of the circle because it fits inside the circle. He then drew a right triangle using a radius of the circle as one side and another side being half the side of the outside hexagon. The center angle is one-third a right angle, or 30 degrees. He also drew another right triangle with a circle diameter as one side and a full side of the inside hexagon as another side. Again, the center angle is one-third a right angle, or 30 degrees. He then successively halved the two inside angles four times, each time doubling the number of sides of the polygons until he arrived at a range for pi based on the half perimeters of two 96-sided polygons, one larger than the circle, the other smaller. And he did all this before the invention of trig, or calculus, or even those analog calculators some of us used back in high school. If you look at Archimedes' limits for pi at each iteration, you'll see that Gaddy's pi falls outside the limits, starting with a 48-sided polygon. A better approximation would be 22 sevenths, Archimedes' upper limit. Even good old 3.14 is a closer approximation to pi than the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. Either his pamphlet was a farce, an April Fool's joke, or René totally misunderstood the purpose for Gaddy's construction. Gaddy wasn't trying to derive the value of pi, he was simply constructing a square with an area close to that of a circle. This exercise was nothing more than working out a puzzle, one of the three classic problems of antiquity, which are construct a cube with twice the volume of another, construct two line segments that divide an angle into three equal parts, and construct a square with the same area as a circle. In summary, René was wrong, and considering René's cavalier attitude toward high school level math and science, is it any wonder that the pompous windbags of academia didn't give René the attention he thought he was due? And if René misunderstood something as simple as a high school teacher's geometric construction, what chance would he have at understanding the science and math involved in putting a man on the moon? Nada. Mm -hmm.